Um, another way, of course, to work with delay is to use to do a recursive one. So for that, I'm just going to make a new patch altogether. Um, and once again, we will start with a click and uh, a button. Again, easy deck. And again, we will use uh, a tap in object and a tap out. Um, and uh, there's no reason, I mean, my, my computer's got masses of memory, so I could make this uh, 10 seconds or longer, um, and my computer wouldn't have any objection to that at all. So we will have um, our raw sound, so our sound that goes straight from the click to our output, as, long, as well as one that's going to the delay line. And this is where it differs from what we had before. So what we want to do is, with a recursive delay, it's, it's also known as a feedback delay, so we want to induce some feedback here. And the easiest way of doing that would be to send the output from tap back into its input. So basically what we'd have is the click going into the tap being delayed by a specific amount that we uh, by an amount that we specify in tap out. At the moment it's nothing, so obviously we need to we need to remedy that in a minute. And then that is going to go back in, be stored by tap in again, and then at the necessary time that delayed output is going to be delayed again and then output. So you get this uh, repeated kind of pattern. Um, and then the output of that can be sent to our uh, gain object and then through the output. So there are two things we're missing here. The, the main one is a way of attenuating this, because at the moment, if we have a delay that is uh, constantly going round at the same level, then it will go on forever and aggregate in terms of uh, volume until it becomes a shriek, uh, which will clip. Um, so we use an object to attenuate, um, and as we saw in this previous patch, We'll use the multiplication object for that. So now uh, we have a way of, of reducing the level before we send it back to the input of uh, tap in. And then, of course, we need to specify what length of delay we want. We have float object for that. And I'm going to send um, the result from the, the uh, attenuated sound. Uh, to my output. I'm not going to send it directly from tap out. I'll send it from the attenuated version and uh, th that way we hear our raw sound at full volume and the rest are going to be lower in volume. So uh, let's make our delay uh, 200 milliseconds in length and we will attenuate it by 10% each time. There it is. So it keeps going uh, until there is no energy left in the system, at which point you don't hear it anymore. Oops. And do exactly the same with any other sound. So, so we'll choose our Cherokee sound again. So we hear that recursive delay. So a very simple process that simply involves this tap in tap out system again. Having done this, uh, we could well we could integrate any of these delay um, engines into our original patch, but I'm going to take this recursive one and put it in. So I'm going to copy and paste it into here. In this case, I'm going to only choose the uh, snare. So I connect that to the tap in and I connect my delayed output again from the attenuated version back into our um, signal chain. So if I play this back, so again we will go for um, 0.8 uh, Well, that's pretty ugly, so let's make it a little bit less dramatic. But it's working. Um, and actually, it's sort of kind of coordinated to the beat, which is probably good. Let's turn this down a bit. 
Um, it sounds, you know, sounds okay like that. I've had to do that manually, so I had to do it by ear to kind of wiggle the fader until it got to a a, um, a value that I thought was acceptable. But it might well be that you want to somehow synchronize your um, BPM value to your, your delay length. And that's very easy to do. We can simply unlock the patch and connect it to the uh, BPM, uh, the millisecond output, which remember is going to be, is not going to be our BPM value, it's going to be another value that was, has been calculated uh, to be the number of milliseconds uh, between each beat to give us that BPM overall. Um, so now, so now we can hear, we get a slightly phasey effect. Oops. And as we change this value, so the tap length, the delay length changes. But we might want to make it a different beat length. So we might still want it to sound uh, rhythmically coherent, uh, but we might not want it to be uh, exactly the same uh, BPM to millisecond length that we had for uh, the metro up here. So um, we just need to perform a calculation on this value to uh, to do that. So I will and I will send it to there and into our delay length. And then I can send a value to this right hand side. Um, and so a one to one ratio will give us that length. Um, but I could say I want it to be okay, so we get a different a different character by sending different values in. So this will be a kind of triplet character to that, or I could do 1.5. Oops. Problem is at the moment I'm sending 1.5 to a cold inlet. Oops, kind of interesting. Um, so a better way perhaps to do this would be to use an object that sends both values, uh, our kind of ratio for delay length and our um, metro speed in at the same time. I'm going to use a pack object for that. So zero and zero points. And what this does, it operates very much like a, a pack PACK object, but um, both inlets you notice are hot, so it will always um, send the data whichever of these uh, inputs I send. And by the way, I um, because there are two values coming from pack, they're both updating this multiplication object. And notice that uh, the value down here is, is changing. I'm going to slow this down a little bit. Oops. So 0 0.5 is obviously uh, more rapid. Zero point six. Anyway, you get the idea. You can synchronize or certainly coordinate beats from your original beat pattern and your delays.